Hey, Bob WP here, and welcome to Do the Woo, the WooCommerce Builder Podcast, episode 210. The show brought to you by GoDaddy Pro, giving you the tools for managing your client's sites with their powerful hub and Yoast SEO, where you can unlock extra tools, features, and SEO for WooCommerce. Tell you more about our two pod friends later in the show. But let's get started as Abba extracts another amazing Woo Builder story with today's guest. Hello and welcome. I'm Abba Takor, and in the studio today we have Meg Phillips. Hello, Meg. Hey, Abba. Thanks for having me. Meg's joining us from sunny United States today. I can see the sun pouring in as um into her studio as well. So it's uh, it's going to be a nice, joyful, happy conversation, I can see, especially with all that sunshine. It is unexpectedly warm today. So I think it's uh, we're in March and I would say it's in the 70s at least uh, and not very breezy. So looks like a springtime summertime day for sure here it's gorgeous out well thank you for for taking time out of your day um to join us for do the woo and to talk about all the things about woo that you love but also your own story and i'm sure it will inspire many many people who are going to be listening to this yeah i'm glad to do it meg Whereabouts in the in the US are, are you based? Because I can see water behind you and a marina and and lots of exciting things. So whereabouts are you? Well, today I'm not at home, but I am based out of uh, a town called Avon on an island called Hatteras. So I live in the Outer Banks of North Carolina on Hatteras Island in a village called Avon, and that is because my husband is a captain. And so we are always on the water. His job requires us to be. So (laughs) you find us today actually in Southport, North Carolina. Um, And we're at the Southport Marina because my husband just finished a yacht delivery for a client. So I had to pick him up. (laughs) So one of the great things about this, um, this podcast is that we are definitely adventurous. And if you're listening to this and you think, hey, I've got a story to tell about being a a WooCommerce builder, then you definitely want to come and join us because today we're at a marina. In fact, before this podcast, we were offered that um, Meg would do the interview from inside a yacht. (laughs) So, you know, if you can If you can meet that or you've got a more unusual recording studio and have a great WooCommerce story, then do get in touch. Well, you know, you spurned a thought that I think is inspiring. And it's just that I think the beauty of the WooCommerce and the WordPress community really lines in the diversity of the folks who have contributed. So um, it's not an accident that I'm in a marina and I'm the author of Charter Boat Bookings, right? So I live this every day. And... I also live WordPress and I also live WooCommerce every day, but the whole other half of my life is charter boats, right? And that's something that, you know, proprietary systems that aren't open source and don't rely on a community. I don't have to meet with a team of charter boat captains to learn what they do. (laughs) I know it. I live it. I breathe it. I love it. Um, And the same is true about WordPress and WooCommerce. So I think that these builder stories are extremely inspiring and I think they're, um, important. They're important to lay a foundation of the of the reason why open source makes sense, and given time, makes the most sense of any sort of software development because you get the diversity of people to bring to life a product that they truly live. And I think that that's I think that's amazing. So I didn't stage this, but it just is, right? <laughs> so. It just is that I happen to be, you know, my husband's on the other side of a yacht delivery that shipwrecked on the beach. And oh, by the way, I'm doing do the woo because I'm charter boat bookings author. Like it's it's true. It's real. So, okay, well, so like you you made me spew my authenticity speech. But (laughs) you've talked about both. And for the people who've who've not have not heard about this before, let's let's give them a little bit of a a background. So um, we WooCommerce is obviously something you feel really passionate about and it's lovely to hear that in your in your voice. And and also um you've been a developer that started 
with both WordPress and Woo, which is just amazing. I think that makes it an even more special, special journey. Meg, how long have you been a developer now? So I uh, picked up PHP, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS in 2009 when I was pregnant with my first child. And um, in the yachting industry, we like to say that um, the best bilge pump is a scared man with a bucket. But what that means is just that um, when you really have a reason to be motivated, you can do almost anything. And I was in a career that required a whole lot of travel. It was very high stress and high energy. And I was looking down my life and thinking I'm going to be, a, I'm now a wife, I'm going to be a mother soon, and I need something that's going to be a little different in my life. And uh, I had this opportunity and I thought, okay, well, if I pick up PHP and HTML and CSS, maybe I can do something a little different. So that was in 2009 and I did quite well with it. <laughs> um, in 2013, I took a job with a small agency and that was the, I was pregnant with my second son. <laughs> and uh, that was the first time that I was introduced to WordPress. So this agency, until then, I built everything from scratch. And the very first thing I built that was significant was um, a piece of software to manage a charter boat business, <laughs> um, a bare boat charter boat business. And, but it was straight PHP, you know, just the typical web stack with no uh, framework at all and not even a javascript framework so i was using just this was a long time ago so i don't you know people were talking about jquery and using it but i remember going to my first php meetup and they were like well what do you think about jquery and i was like i don't know because i don't know what it means <laughs> but um so then i joined that small agency in manio north carolina on the outer banks and the agency owner used wordpress for everything um, and the first project that I got in that agency was building a WooCommerce site for a brew pub called Outer Banks Brewing Station. And so, but my very first WordPress site was actually also um, a WooCommerce site. And I don't think I ever built another site without WooCommerce. So people often ask me questions about, well, like, what if you don't use WooCommerce? And I'm like, well, I don't know, <laughs> because I sell stuff. Like, I feel like uh, every website can you know you might as well sell a t-shirt <laughs> or something so I tend to have it there in the background and I like the fact that it gives a little bit of extra user abilities so it's helpful <laughs> even if you don't necessarily need to use it it doesn't hurt to have it if you've got a setup that doesn't sort of like need a different um why don't you know you wouldn't want to do it if there was a performance reason that you didn't but if you don't have a performance reason that you wouldn't, then WooCommerce brings a lot to the table. Definitely listening to you and, and having having um, worked and seen some of your projects in the past. It isn't just about providing a software solution. It's for you. It's more about actually a whole experience. Coming into, into WooCommerce and now everything you do is, is Woo related. You know, and it's really lovely to hear that every WordPress site you do is, is has a WooCommerce element. But that's not where your your career started. And e-commerce, obviously, and commerce generally has been a really important foundation for you. And I guess to hear someone talk about the joys of WooCommerce, who's come from a commerce background and sales, I think it's even more special. So when let's, let's go backwards into your journey. We have to do a bit of time travel together. So let's let's step back before you discovered web and PHP, you know, as if there was life before PHP. Is there life before PHP? <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. I think sometimes there is life with PHP, but normally I have to be in a very closed, dark room and and nursing a headache when I'm when I'm thinking that. To take a journey with me. Let's travel back to when you started off your your career in sciences and in the serious sciences too oh my goodness that's a long time ago <laughs> that's a long time yeah I, I said we're gonna do a bit of traveling holy cow we are most people don't know that about me see i do my homework the um in terms of um you've always gone into professions where they're not necessarily 
to professions that were were common, were something that you know women and girls are encouraged to to join. You've from because you worked in manufacturing, you've worked in the serious sciences, in research, and um, in technology development. I think the list is endless, Meg. And at every point, you've found something something new, and you've been at this at the cornerstone of innovation. Yeah, I would say that's kind of the thread. That's the common thread is I am creative, but I'm also analytical. So I have this like really dorky cover on my Mac that says right brain, left brain. And I love it because it it reminds me of who I am. And it reminds me every time I open my computer to stay in the center of my lane, right? I'm probably not the best engineer to deploy a project necessarily right into production, but I need to stay in my lane and my lane is that I am very good at using my creativity and my technical acumen together as a tool that I think gives me an ability to see opportunities that others don't. And so I have always, my career is this unusual mishmash of extremely technical and extremely creative And early before I sort of found my lane, I thought, oh, well, I have to be the world's best polymer chemist because that would be the coolest thing ever. And I could create new molecules and then I would solve all of the world's problems. right? (laughs) And so I did graduate school in polymer chemistry. And before that, I was at the national lab. Um, And, you know, I did work on lithium polymer battery fuel cell project. I did work on all kinds of heavy science and and I went back to graduate school but between the two between the national lab and graduate school I went to work in fashion (laughs) uh, at Eddie Bauer at the headquarters and then I went back to graduate school and then I went back to fashion and so I spent my early 20s really waffling trying to find a lane where I could use both sides of myself and I think that landing in technology and software has given me an outlet for both because everything that I do with WooCommerce and with WordPress is as creative, not just innovative creative, but visually creative because I have that part of me as well, right? So visually creative, innovatively creative, but also the engineering part of it. If I, if I get in, I find myself, if I stay in something that's almost too purely art, I get bored and I'm not as good as really great artists. You know what I mean? Like I can remember uh, when I was in the fashion industry, I would meet other people that men and women that were just extreme, like draw jaw droppingly talented at fashion sketching and coming up with new ideas and and putting uh, personality into garments that I could never quite find that, you know, (laughs) like I wasn't, I wasn't quite there, you know, but um, when it came right down to taking that and making it into a garment and I could do that extremely well. Right. And so the same is true. I think where I am now, I can see opportunities in user experience that sometimes get missed, but, they're usually based in something extremely technical that I see from an engineering perspective. Oh, if we did it this way, we would have an opportunity to play with a UX that's different. If, does that make sense? Uh, definitely. And and have, having having had the pleasure of working with you on, on projects, um, the engineering definitely comes through. And I think it's also worth highlighting, just because you may transfer from one career to another, your skill set may actually be not only usable, but may be enhanced, or it might actually get its freedom in what you find. Right. And I think that's the joy of working with things as a developer like WooCommerce, is that you have that freedom of, of innovation to a degree, but you also have the enthusiasm and the energy of other people that you can think, oh, okay, this is, we can stretch the boundaries. We can do something different. We can make it think outside the box is actually, it's obviously the buzzword, but I think from what you've shared already and our other guests as well, and, and my own experience, 
with WordPress, with WooCommerce, with a lot of open source software, you can imagine something and then you can build it. Yes. And as both of both of us also build AI solutions and work in that area, I think we've definitely seen that and in, in voice recognition and, and how that is coming into not just the, the specialist area that we've both worked in, but also now into WooCommerce and and later on into WordPress in much more detail. Yeah, I think that there's a big opportunity in open source. I don't know how to describe it other than those silly shows, right? Where they're like cooking shows. And what is that one where it's like super high level serious, like at the top end of gourmet? Anyway, the point is that at the beginning of the show, they're walked into this pantry. And inside the pantry is almost like every gourmet ingredient that you could ever want to use. And these chefs are given a scenario. They're given a creative direction with no limits and this infinite pantry. And I feel like that's what open source is, right? So you'll find in open source that there are a diversity of packages that can kind of all fit together. There's an infinite diversity of people and uh, perspectives, right? Different internationalities, nationalities, different locales. Uh, different genders, different life experiences, different problem solution sets. And when you throw all that into the pantry, you can come out with something really amazing, right? But if you didn't have the pantry, you wouldn't have the shoulders of the giants to stand on, right? And I think that that's what open source Exactly. It's what open source gives to the world. And, you know, I've been writing a lot lately and I've learned something about myself and maybe it's it's maturity maybe it's age but I'm learning to lean into big questions that I have in life and one of those is like why am I so intrigued by open source like what is it about open source that drives me or makes me think it's good I've been trying to process through uh writing the right way to deliver that message and you know it struck me that open source is a is a good citizen. So it's not so much that it's about how much money you do or don't charge for the product that you're building or creating. It's about the fact that the good citizen thing to do is to continue adding your little bit of shoulder on top of the shoulders that you're standing on so that you're paying it forward to the next generation of developers, right? Because it, it um, and, and, you know, in retail and in, <laughs> in, Yachting, we say, um, you know, there's the maw theory or the tide lifts off ships, right? So the maw theory in retail is that, you know, it made a lot of sense to put all the clothing stores together in one mall, right? Because if you needed clothes, you went to the mall (laughs) and you were likely to find what you what you wanted. And I think that that's sort of what open source is to the world for software and technology. And I think that it's important for uh, individuals for groups and for big corporations to continue putting back into that uh, foundation to accelerate innovation. I love the shopping mall allergy. I, I, I thought that, you know, you might get that in somewhere. And for, for those who, um, who are listening to this podcast and can't see Meg, she sat um, in a glamorous location with boats and yachts and beautiful sky behind her wearing wearing you know dark sunshades and and looking very glamorous and and talking about and shopping malls um and 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 high quality earbuds as well there you are I've got those in um but it shows that there is not one perspective of what you have to be like to be good at development or to be interested in development as you said it's about that richness of the community that is behind Woo and behind WordPress. And that is what innovates, that's what drives enthusiasm. It keeps us all happy and connected. And it is incredibly special. Hey everyone, Bob WP dropping into the show for a short break to tell you more about our two pod friends and to thank them for their amazing support. Staying on top of things, What about managing all those client projects in one place? The GoDaddy Pro Hub does just that, and it's free. From a single dashboard, you will have control over your client sites, products, and projects in one seamless experience. 
Save time on repetitive site maintenance tasks. Access all your client accounts with a single sign-on. And use tools that improve client collaboration. And top that off with priority support and it's the all-in-one hub. Learn all about it by simply going to dothewoo.io slash hub. It's a fact. Yoast SEO works seamlessly with WooCommerce. And whether it's for yourself or your clients, Yoast unlocks extra tools, features, and SEO for some serious online selling and competition. The products will stand out in search results while you get the best practice SEO on the technical side. And to top that off, you are not alone. Their e-commerce SEO training is included with the purchase of Yoast SEO to help you and your clients learn how to get the most out of the features it includes. Just visit Yoast.com and boost up the discovery of you or your client's online shop. Make sure and check out both of these pod friends. And now let's get back to the show. We're going to travel a little bit more now um, along your journey. So we're going to actually go from where you were working as a, as a polymer chemist to, to then going and deciding to to work in commerce. In, when you were working in, in commerce, obviously you're working in fashion and for some big brands at the time. Are there things that you've learned there that have made you a, a, a better or stronger WooCommerce developer? Absolutely. I, you know, and this is another thing I said I was processing and writing. Like I've been processing the idea of visual merchandising and storytelling in e-commerce is something that I feel very passionate about. I don't know that I've, I've leaned into it enough. I haven't tried really hard, but I have spent a lot of time trying to find other brands that are doing it. So I worked in product development in women's wear and men's wear and intimate apparel, which isn't like kinky stuff. It's just bras and panties and sleepwear. And I actually only worked in sleepwear and activewear um, for big billion dollar brands. So I learned a lot about visual merchandising and I learned a lot about merchandising. I learned a lot about product development. I learned a lot about uh, how that whole industry comes together. And it certainly informs my perspective on what the retail experience should be when you're shopping online. And particularly at a place where we are in time, right? So in 2020, some things happened that changed the world. And I don't think we've yet righted the ship to get back to normal all the way. And I don't know that we ever will go exactly back to where we were. And maybe that'll be a good thing. And maybe it won't be. We'll see in the end. But one thing that it, that I think it forever changed is shopping. <laughs> so shopping was already changing, right? But I think that the COVID lockdown experience changed it more and it accelerated the growth of e-commerce and online shopping in an instant. And I would like to see how that begin, how that continues to evolve, right? So we, I think it changed in a lot of ways, but one of the ways that I noticed in particular is that a lot of small businesses entered e-commerce when they weren't in e-commerce before. They were brick and mortar and they didn't really have a big reason to be in e-commerce. And now all of a sudden, They've gone into e-commerce. And I think that um, the tangibility and the personability and the, the shopping experience is not about buying and selling. For many people, it is the social interaction of their day, um, particularly older people and younger people who are in the stress years of parenting with toddlers. The women at the market might be the friendliest non-toddler voice you speak to every day, you know, <laughs> and I can attest to that personally. Like my husband traveled a lot when my first son was born and literally like the only adult I would get to talk to would be like the folks at Target or at, at you know, the grocery store. And that was like lifeblood for me. Right. And so there's this whole experience associated with shopping that's not just about buying and selling. And so I think that we are going to continue as an industry to mature. I think that we're going to continue to learn how to build those experiences. And while I do think that it's a little bit hokey, the whole metaverse thing, 
I think that even right now where we are in WooCommerce, right now where we are in WordPress, we have a great opportunity to lean into that and create experiences that build community in the same way that having brick and mortar space, brick and mortar shopping spaces do. And so I think that that's something I'm personally right now interested in, um, in my life and in my world, because I do think that, you know, a lot of small businesses didn't make it through, right? And so we don't want to isolate people. We want people to continue those relationships and, and, we, and then lean into what can, what can we do as the folks who know how to use these tools the best or maybe most familiar with these tools to help small businesses uh, continue that relationship online. And it all helps. You know, it's certainly what drives me in terms of helping businesses that would otherwise have just not, not be here but have a great idea, have a great energy. And and WooCommerce just does just, just give that opportunity, which is which is fantastic. So Meg, let's take a fast forward trip now. So we've we've talked about working in commerce and the lessons for e commerce. But you've also talked about the importance of having and working in on solutions that tackle isolation. So let's go to 2020 and um, and just before the the pandemic um, hit, you felt very strongly about isolation and you decided to produce, create, um, and and generally you know find solutions for a problem that you were facing and also hopefully to help others. So tell us a little bit about your call for code adventure and how that started. So my children's school was shut down because of COVID and I built an app called School Listed. And it is a web application that uses uh, the WordPress REST API. And uh, it's designed to also use other APIs like Google for Education and Microsoft for Education. I guess they call it Google Classroom. And the idea was really to um, build one tool that felt like and functioned as the user experience of a social media site, because parents, uh, most every parent in every location, at least across the United States, understand the idea of a feed, right? (laughs) So the idea was to create a class feed from the diversity of tools that are getting thrown at parents at that time, at that moment in time. So Every different school district, every different classroom, every different teacher was using a different set of tools to communicate to parents what assignments were due and when. And Schoolistit aimed to give the parents a solution, one central place that they could go in an understandable format, mobile friendly, to tell them what is due and when. For every child in the household, in a way that was completely decoupled from private and personal student information, right? So um, where it gets really tricky in education is that the performance grades and those kinds of things, the identity of students, those pieces of information are protected and rightly so. Um, School Listed aims at getting only the information that's universal by classroom. And it makes the assumption that the adult who is in charge of making sure that the schoolwork is getting done knows which class and at what grade level their students are participating in. So it just creates a little social media news feed of what's doing when. Simple as that. And I I thought um, it was good. And so I entered it into Call for Code and it did quite well. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity that was afforded me to participate in you know, open source in a bigger way uh, outside of just the WordPress community and to sort of I felt like in a way I was being an emissary, right? So I was bringing WordPress and WooCommerce and other parts of open source all together in this one piece of app and for a really good cause. So (laughs) what a great experience. So Call call for Code is obviously an international competition and it must have been a bit bit unnerving really to to put yourself forward at at first in that. The Call for Code um, is run by IBM and Linux Foundation and, and a couple of other partners. And um, as you said, it's about doing 
tech for good. Yes. When you entered that, did you think that you could end up as one of the top five global winners for 2020? I honestly, I sort of looked at it from the other perspective. Um, what is it? The funny saying that people say is like, you can never win if you don't try. Like, that's not clever at all. There's a more clever way to say that. But um, essentially, I would say that I was more nervous, like trying out for cheerleading in fifth grade than I was entering my app to call for code because I actually thought I had a chance at getting cheerleader in fifth grade, but I knew I didn't have a chance at getting <laughs> call for code. I just thought that maybe, just maybe, if the right person saw what I could understand the vision that I had, it might could help somebody else, right? So I believe strongly in open source. And I kind of think as an open source developer, sometimes our strongest talent is hidden in a house on the beach on Hatteras Island, and we never knew it was there, right? So like, that's an example is I was out there like designing this app in my head that could help, you know, thousands of parents across the globe, millions, maybe billions, but how was I going to get anyone to to listen to me? <laughs> so I figured that what could it hurt? All they could tell me is that no, right? <laughs> All that I could do is get told no. And it really was, I believe that it was a, sort of a faded thing because I didn't know a lot about Coffer Code until I built this app and it met, it met the spec. And I was like, why not? It's good. I think it's good. <laughs> Maybe they'll think it's good too. So um, and I think that that's what open source teaches us. I think that um, when it really shines is when we give opportunity to hear the genius of someone who might have otherwise not been heard. And I think one of the, you know, having read some of the stories around this, not only did you build a, a solution from scratch, you wrote all the code, um, you didn't outsource that, and you did all this while homeschooling three children and working from home in the middle of a pandemic it's just pretty awesome well when you put it like that it sounds like supernatural but (laughs) I can promise you uh that I'm not that special I'm like millions of other moms you and fathers and people you just pick up your big girl pants right and you know different people have different nervous energy, you know? (laughs) So when I'm faced with something that I don't understand, it's therapy for me to try to, even if it's just one tiny little part, I felt I needed to do something to fix the pandemic, right? So (laughs) in my own little way, I thought I could fix it with this app. And so for me, it was therapy. And I would say that people at least in the WordPress and WooCommerce community, we say code is poetry. You hear that a lot around here, right? But I would say for me, code is therapy. And it, it it's the same sort of therapy as sewing. I don't know if there are many folks in our audience who like to sew or understand sewing or have ever tried it, but sewing is this beautiful so problem, solution, instant gratification, right? So I need a pretty outfit hmm, I've got this fabric back there. (laughs) If I cut it right and I drape it well and I stitch it together beautifully, I've built a solution to my problem and it only took me a couple hours. And that for me is what code does for me. And I find that if I go for too long without sitting in front of my text editor and like hacking away, even if it's badly written code, like sometimes I build things that I call prototypes, which in other words means I cut every shortcut and didn't really follow best practices, but it looks really cool. And um, I, I wouldn't say I did that with, I didn't do that with school list it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that it, it's that therapeutic thing that I'm doing is I'm, I'm looking at something in my life that I've, I would like to be better. And I think that I can build this one little thing and it'll, it'll be better. And even if maybe it's not, it fixes something in me. Right. So I built school listed as a a way to cope with the pandemic, I think as much as anything else. So people make it sound like I'm a hero, but in reality, I was a really scared mom and I wasn't sleeping at night. And so rather than eat ho-hos and ding-dongs, I built an app. 
<laughs> and 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 why not? And you know, Call for Code it, it is that special. It invites developers and problem solvers from around the world to build and contribute to sustainable open source technology projects. And and that is exactly what you did. You know, some of these projects address social issues, some address humanitarian issues. And to get from hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of entries to being in the top five globally and being, you know, being celebrated as that and now an ambassador for that, hopefully inspiring a next generation of developers is 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 pretty amazing what i would like to say to other developers is sort of threefold one is you know people talk about power is responsibility right so it, those of us who can write code we have a superpower that 80% 90% what maybe 99% of the population out there doesn't have particularly if we understand open source and understand how to use open source in a powerful way, right? If we can use all of those building blocks in that pantry that we discussed to solve a problem that we have a unique perspective on, I don't just think that we can do that. I think that we should do that. And it's our responsibility to step up and pay a little bit into this community that gave us the skills. So I don't know about others that are listening to this, but I am a product of the open source world, right? So I didn't, while I have an engineering degree, it's not in computer engineering, right? It's in a different kind of engineering. I am able to do these things because of the devotion, the volunteering, the millions of hours that millions of people all across the globe have contributed to open source. Therefore, I feel like it's my part of this equation to use those skills to do good things. And while I don't always know what good things are, sometimes (laughs) it's obvious, right? As a mom with two kids in seven classes, it was obvious to me at that moment that someone needed a tool like this. And it wasn't just me that needed the tool. So the one thing is contributing to open source isn't just a privilege, it's a responsibility, I think. And the second thing is, at least for me, I view it that way. It's sort of like servant leadership. And then the second thing is that just because I may not think I'm the most genius developer in the world, it doesn't mean that any other developer had that same solution in mind. So I have this bad habit of assuming somebody else thought that before I thought that and that they surely have already built it. And what I learned with School Listed is that they didn't think of that (laughs) and I built it. And if I hadn't built it, maybe no one else would have thought of it and been brave enough to come to the table and say, hey, this kind of a thing could help a lot of people. So I would say that you, not only should you look at it as a a gift that you've been given that you should use responsibly, but I think also don't underestimate your own creativity and your unique perspective in the world. Nobody else shares my life experiences exactly. That empowers me to help other people in a way that is unique. So don't ever underestimate yourself and your own creativity. In terms of that, great inspirational comment we're going to go right back to the current day because just we we booked you for this podcast and and after that um your job changed so you're now actually not only talking and inspiring people about woocommerce um as a developer but now you're actually going to be working on woocommerce full-time as a woocommerce developer advocate Yes. And that's a big responsibility, but I think I'm perfect for it because I've been doing that anyway, as much as anyone would listen to me. And so I feel like this is just another one of those faded moments that I have gotten the opportunity to be right in my lane at this moment in time. And we sort of talked about that early in the conversation that before I was maybe mature enough, to hear what my soul was telling me. I did a lot of flip-flopping and belting back and forth, but uh, marriage, motherhood, and age all come together. 
that I'm now able to hear what my soul is telling me is where I need to be at a particular moment in time. And I feel very strongly that this is a moment in time that WooCommerce and WordPress are uniquely positioned to actually pay out on the on the big idea to democratize commerce, right? I think that now is the time. And I certainly want to do every bit of my part that I can do to share that with other developers across the globe so that they can appreciate their role in that. I'm really excited about that. And I hope that I can live up to (laughs) the sort of uh, greatness of the responsibility and that I can fulfill my role in the community. Yeah. I'm excited and I'm looking forward to all of what that can mean. And we're going to look forward to hearing more about that in the future too. And and also you celebrating and sharing the wonderful Do The Woo podcasts to people that you go and talk to. Yeah, absolutely. I, I Well, I've been uh, binge watching because uh, I think I was underwatched or under listened rather in do the woo. So I've been going back trying to binge watch and listen to um, really old things and then really newer ones. I think it's good to get a perspective on how that's evolved over time. So yeah, I would say everybody give a listen. Meg, thank you for joining us. If people listening to this, obviously we'll have some links on the website about the different things that you're doing and we can add one for the call for code so people can hear and learn more about that. But where would people find you on the web? Right. So I am Meg Phillips 91. So um, if you Google Meg Phillips 91, you would probably first find my personal blog. And then uh, I charter boat bookings, which is the plugin that I wrote, is um, on mspmedia.org. Yeah. So you can find me. I'm on Twitter. I don't I'm not all that active on Twitter, but I am there. And I'm Meg Phillips 91 there. Um, I'm Meg Phillips 91 at Gmail. Like you can get me anywhere with Meg Phillips 91. So track me down. I'm Meg Phillips 91 in the WordPress community as well. And uh, no doubt on the WooCommerce Slack as well that people can can track you. Yes, (laughs) I'm Meg Phillips 91 there too. So Meg, thank you very much for joining us today and sharing your very inspiring story. And we wish you well in your new role as developer advocate and look forward to all the adventures that um, you will have there. Well, thank you. I hope that we will do this again someday. Hey, everyone. Thanks again for tuning into today's show. I'd like to give another shout out to our two pod friends. Go to Eddie Pro's Hub, where you can manage your client sites with some of the top professional tools in the trade and ensure both you and your client's products stand out and compete in the search results with Yoast SEO at Yoast.com. And make sure to follow us on Twitter at DoTheWoo, on our website at DoTheWoo.io, or on your favorite podcast app. Until the next time, keep on doing the woo.